In this video, let me show you how you can connect a slicer with your data type. That means, each time you select a field directly in your slicer, you apply this selection to your data type. I show you. So first, let me remind you what is a tool data type. So let's say I want to fill some country name in different cells. And as you can notice, Excel is able to ask me, do you want to convert this as data type? So I can select yes here just by clicking on this option, or I select all the country and I go to data. And in data, you have data type. And here's the option geography, or if it's not visible, you click here and you have the different category of data type. So I select geography. And when it's done, as you can see here, a small flag appears in front of each country name. That means I'm connected to an external database. And when I click on this option, I can add different fields, like for instance, area, also populations, like this. So here, as you can see, it's very easy to use data type but it's not so easy to select the field that you want because as you can see, there is a lot of fields and I just want to use some of them. So if I want to use a slicer to select the field that I want, here is a trick. So first, what I need to do is to collect some of the field I want to return. And the best way to do that is to create a table and to know the way to write the different field. The trick is here, you say equal, you select one of the cells where you have your data type and immediately here, you have the list of the field. But not only that, you need to press dot to select one of them, for instance, area, like this. This is a way to write your formula with data type, the reference of your cell, dot, and then the field name. So now the idea is to use this trick to return the field that I want to select. So I want to select area, calling code, Capital major city, leaders, population, and subdivision. So I don't have the choice. I have to write all this information directly in the cells. I'm not sure for capital major city, so I return here and I check the writing. Ah, there is an uppercase for city. Very important to respect the writing. Like this. And now what I'm going to do is to insert this data inside a table. But before that, I need to create an ID for each one of these fields. And to create an ID, it's very simple. I'm just going to write a series of value, one, two. I select these two cells and I use a fill handle to create my series of value. I give a name to my header ID and here field. And I insert this information inside a table, insert table and I change the name of my table, table fields like this. Also very important, I recommend to copy this table in a new worksheet. Control X to cut and Control V to paste. The table has been removed from this worksheet to this one. And now when it's done, when I return to the tab table design, you can see that I have insert slicer and I select the field that I want to return, this column. And now when I select one of this information, as you can see, I select only one row, the one where I have this information. So now what I have to do is to write a formula that will return the value of the ID in function of the value selected in the slicer. And what is the function I need to use? It's a function subtotal. Why subtotal? Because subtotal return value in function of the value filter and not the other. I show you. So let's say I want to return the value of the ID here. So let's say I want to return this value. So what I'm going to do, very simple, subtotal. 
and subtotal is different of the other Excel function because here you have to specify the type of calculation you want and I'm going to specify that I want the sum, that means the value 9. And then what is the reference? It's the colon of my table, so I select here the colon ID, not here, not A, the colon ID, like this. And you can see here that I have the table name and the colon name, and I close the parenthesis. So like this, as you can see, I have three, and if I select leaders, I have four, and so on. But not only that, also what I have to do is to convert this result, so the ID, with the value of the field. And for that, I'm going to use a function xlookup. So xlookup needs only three arguments. The first argument is the result of subtotal. Then, what is the lookup array? It's a colon where I have my ID table fields ID, and what is the colon I want to return? It's the second colon, the colon field, like this. So now when I select a value in the filter, automatically I return this value and not the ID. And now it's nearly finished, yes! What I have to do now is to link my data type with this cell, the cell where I have the result of my selection in my slicer. And there is another function to do that, it's field value. So I return in the sheet 1. I remove this field. So we have seen that to create a formula with a data type, it's very simple. It's just equal the cell where I have my data type, dot, and one of the field here. So we need two fields, the reference of the cell where I have the data type and the value of the field. So here, like I said, you have a function, it's a function field value. The first value, it's the cell where I have the data type, Japan. And what is the field name? The field name, it's the reference of the cell where I have the result of my selection. And I press F4. And I have Tokyo because, as you can see in my slicer, I have selected capital major city. But of course, it's not convenient to have the slicer in one worksheet and the result in another worksheet. So I cut this slicer and I return in worksheet one and I paste the slicer. Like that, I have directly the information. And of course, what I just have to do is to copy this formula here. And now when I select something, population for instance, or area, you have immediately the information. But again, what is not convenient is to have the result of the formula here and not the header here. So what I can do, very simple, I can just say equal this result, like this. Ah, oh, much better. But there is a problem. Well, in fact, there is two problems. Imagine there is no selection at all. I have NA everywhere. So to solve this, I'm going to reuse one of the arguments of the function it's lookup. It's the argument number four. And if not found, that means if the function return NA, I can specify a value. And here I'm going to say, by default, you will return population. That means even if I select no field here, I will return always population. But if I select area, I have area, calling code, no problem. And again, if I clear all the filter, it's by default population. But not only that, I have another issue. It's the leader or subdivision. Because for these two fields, I can return more than one value. And because Excel has not enough room to write the different result, I have spill except for the last one. So here the idea is not to write the result vertically, but horizontally. And there is a function to do that. It's a function array to text. So now if I return here and I write the previous formula directly to the function array to text, just like that, no parameter. 
and I copy down. Now the result is in only one cell and you don't have the spill error. Again, for leaders, it works. And now let's say I want to add another value. Clear field, 7. And I will select this time official language. Like this. Automatically, the slicer has been updated, and if I select official language, it works. And here, for India, I have more than one language. Another test, let's say Belgium. I copy the formula. It works.